Hello dear students, this is the second lecture of extensions of Mendelian genetics and in this lecture we will be discussing dominant and recessive epistasis. Now in the first part of epistasis we have already discussed one example of dominant epistasis which was 12 is to 3 is to 1 ratio and which was discovered uh, by Bateson and Punit in uh, Cookerbits. Now today we will be discussing the second example of dominant epistasis that is 13 is to 3 ratio and this ratio was discovered in feather colors in chickens. So there are uh, two whites in chickens and these are white legon and white vein dots. White legon is dominant over white vein dots and white legon is also dominant over colored. So please remember this point so that this ratio becomes clear to you. In the first cross, when white legon was crossed with white vein dot, in F1 white was obtained. And so it was concluded that probably white legon is dominant over white vein dot. But when the selfing was done of F1 progeny, then the ratio which was obtained was 13 white is to 3 colored. So this was quite confusing for the scientists and how to explain this ratio. So this ratio was explained like uh, when the selfing was done for white legon. So these, these were the progenies which were obtained. You can see in the checkerboard. So all those progenies which have at least one capital W allele and capital C allele, they will be white. And all those progenies which will be having only capital C allele, they will be colored. So from the checkerboard, you can observe that there are 12 progenies. Uh, which are having capital W plus capital C as well as only capital W. And there is one progeny which is homozygous recessive. So this was white vendor. So this becomes 12 plus 1 is equal to 13 white progeny. And all the genotypes which have only capital C, they will be colored. So from this checkerboard, what we can conclude? that all those genotypes which have both at least one capital W and one capital C, they will be white in color because capital W is dominant over capital C. In the presence of capital W, the capital C is unable to express itself. That is why it is an example of dominant epistasis. The capital C is expressing only in that, uh, in those genotypes where the capital W is absent. So this is an example of dominant epistasis because one of the dominant allele capital W is suppressing the other dominant non-allele that is capital C. So this is an example of dominant epistasis and in this capital W will be epistatic because it is suppressing the other dominant non-allele C. So C will be hypostatic and W will be epistatic. So what we have concluded that in this checkerboard all those genotypes which have at least one capital W and one capital C they all those genotypes will be white and all those genotypes which have only capital C they will be colored. So phenotypic ratio will be 13 white is to 3 colored and when we split these 13 white the genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 2 is to 4 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 and the colored will be 1 is to 2. 3 colored will be 1 is to 2 ratio. So uh, you can see the phenotypic ratio how the phenotypic ratio has been split into genotypic ratio. So this was about dominant epistasis. Now 
we have already discussed two examples of dominant epistasis 12 is to 3 is to 1 and 13 is to 3 i hope it is clear from uh, these videos and you can refer uh, the book peers or uh, you can also read uh, introduction to genetic analysis by griffiths or concepts of genetics by peers so it will be more clear to you when you read books for these examples now the other example which we are going to discuss today is recessive epistasis we have done two examples of dominant epistasis for recessive epistasis, we will be doing only one example and the ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 4. So, 9, 9 is to 3 is to 4, you can see this is an example of modified dihybrid ratio. So, uh, this is how to explain this ratio and how it was discovered. This ratio is also called supplementary ratio and why this is called supplementary ratio, we will discuss. Uh, this ratio was discovered in guinea pigs and <coughs> you have to remember this line that when you when we uh, discuss this uh, ratio we have to remember that the recessive allele is as good as dominant allele for this ratio now when this was discovered in guinea pigs there are three uh, patterns in a uh, pattern of colors in guinea pigs which are black aguti and albino now in the first cross that is cross 1 when aguti was crossed with albino in f1 aguti was obtained in and in f2 3 aguti is to 1 albino was obtained so from this cross we, it was concluded that probably the color is controlled by one pair of genes and uh, it is following all the laws of inheritance so aguti is uh, dominant over albino in the second cross when black was crossed with aguti Aguti was obtained in F1 and so it was uh, concluded that Aguti is dominant over black. In F2, as expected, 3 Aguti is to 1 black was obtained. But in cross 3, when black was crossed with albino, uh, to the uh, surprise, uh, instead of black or albino, in F1, Aguti was obtained and in F2, after selfing of F1, 9 aguti is to 3 black is to 4 albino were obtained. Now when you see 9 is to 3 is to 4 is nothing but 9 plus 3 plus 4 is equal to 16. So this is a modified dihybrid ratio and from this it was concluded that probably the color is controlled by two pair of genes. Now how to explain this 9 is to 3 is to 4 ratio. So this was explained like this. When in cross 3 black was crossed with albino. So the genotype of black say uh, we take it as capital B, capital B, small a, small a. And for albino, say, we have small b, small b, capital A, capital A. So, in F1, when Aguti was obtained, this was a dihybrid having capital B, small b, capital A, small a. And in F2, how to explain 9 Aguti, 3 black and 4 albino. So, in this checkerboard, all those genotypes which have at least one capital B and one capital A they will be all having a Guti pattern and they are marked with um, with a triangle high um, yellow triangle so all these genotypes which have at least one capital B and one capital A they will be a Guti all the genotypes which have only capital B they will be black in color they are marked with red and all the genotypes which have only capital A they will be albino also the homozygous recessive genotype will be albino so from this checkerboard what we conclude that probably capital a is supplementing capital b in giving the aguti pattern and when capital b is alone it is giving black color while when capital a is alone it is giving albino so whether it is capital a or small a both are giving albino pattern so from this checkerboard what we conclude that cap capital a has no identity of its own it is just supplementing capital b in giving the aguti pattern so here whether it is capital a or small a which are all marked in uh, blue highlighter they are all giving albino pattern so we say that capital a is equal to small a 
so recessive allele is as good as albine um, recessive allele is as good as dominant a allele it has no capit dominant a has no uh, role of its own it is just supplementing capital b in uh, giving aguti pattern so this is an example of supplementary genes because <coughs> the capital a is just supplementing the capital b in giving the aguti so the phenotypic ratio comes out to be 9 aguti is to 3 black is to 4 albino and you can split the genotypic ratio like this so what is our conclusion for uh, supplementary genes or 9 is to 3 4 is to 4 ratio a only supplements b it has no expression of its own and recessive a is as good as recess uh, is as good as dominant a recess which means that recessive allele is as good as dominant allele so this is an example of supplementary ratio because the a is only supplementing b in give, give, giving the aguti pattern and this is an example of recessive epistasis because recessive allele is as good as dominant allele i hope it is clear to you both the epistasis dominant recess and uh, recessive epistasis is clear to you so we will be meeting in next video lecture now and in the meantime you can refer good books like peers uh, and uh, griffiths to make your concepts clear thank you